What's up everyone? Welcome to the HN Vlog. Today is Monday. Not my favorite day, but uh, it's kind of quiet, man. The end of the year is, is, is creeping. Not much to do, but today I want to talk about access. I think by far, access to the right people is the key for any company to expand. Have you ever seen, and I'm sure it happens to anybody, have you ever seen companies that have a poor quality service or poor quality technology and still dominating the market? Because they have access. And without access, I don't care how great your tech is, it's gonna be really hard for you to penetrate any market in Africa. So let's let's get deeper, man. Check out this vlog, man. Let me know what you think, man. A little bit of downtime. Um, just want to talk to you guys about uh, access, man. First of all, access and networking, it's hand in hand, but it's a little bit different, right? Access is you have a solution or a product or whatever the case that is, and you need access to that market, right? Let's say you're a B2B, you need access. Uh, to companies, to businesses, you know, to give you the, some of that business. Uh, networking, you're just networking, finding the, to get to the access, right? You're networking, so it, networking is a vehicle to get to the access, but access more than anywhere I've done business, Africa is all about access. You can, man, you can bring the best product you want. Man. Let's say the top notch, number one product, um, and your competitor have a crappy product, something shitty, not even, uh, um, can't even compete, overpriced, poor, whatever you want to call it, poor services. But that company that have poor services, crappy product is killing you in the market. Why? Why? It's access. Africa is the only market I've seen to this day where it doesn't matter it doesn't really matter how bad your, your stuff is but if you have a good access you're going to win the market because people can easily block we, we still have this i don't know how we call this uh, market it's not a free market per se the market in africa most african countries is dominated by key players it's not like in the states or in europe where the market is very has been very well developed where customers have the end game, you know, and they have options, and you don't really need, I, I'll give you a perfect example. I've done business, I've, I've been in logistics here in, in Burundi, and I've done logistics in the States. Um, I, 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 had a, I had a small fleet of trucks, I had 10 trucks in the States, and I had a fleet, a small fleet of uh, equipment in, in Burundi. And I can see, in the States, I never seen the client, everything was digitized. The board was digitized. I would get clients from the board, fax them. Back then it was fax, um, email, because you know trucking is still an old. Well, it, it's it's changing a little bit, but it's still an old, old tech uh, type of business. So clients were still using faxes and all those things. But um, it was very interesting. I, never, I would never see the client. I would get business fax them the, the contract, sign it, get the business, get paid whenever, and then boom, business was gone. And I'm talking about the states. In Burundi, it was different. First of all, there's no digitization of the board. And what I mean by board is finding loads that you want to carry, right? You needed to know the right people, right? And then there was a, a, a clique of, of brokers that, that owned the market. So you have to be very familiar with those guys. And of course, you, you know, you put in some type of uh, um, uh, what you call that? Uh, uh, what they call grease the wheel? <laughs> and some type of uh, fee that they charge for you to get access to their client and all those things. Access. But I didn't need access in the states. I, I was building. Uh, I, we rose in six years. I grows a little bit over five million dollars with zero access. In 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 Brunei, I was struggling. I was struggling. 
And people tell you, man, Henry, you know, if you want contracts, it'll be easy for you. Just give us a, a, a cut of the, of the fee. And I, I, I'm not built like that. So I was not making any money. I ended up selling the business. Same thing about uh, A-Red. I started A-Red trying to build the best, most advanced solar kiosk in the market to modernize the aging business, to change the game of how distribution connectivity is done, add a localized uh, um, uh, cloud services to even bring offline connectivity um, so, so more people can have access to digital services, you know, access does not work just from the top. But for years, I was not going anywhere. And all type of key was still dominating the market. Our cost was not that, you know, there was not off actually. All the kiosks was more expensive. And as I got, you know, after three, four years, I started learning. And people were telling me, man, it doesn't matter how great your product is. You need access, you need somebody you know, to open the door. Some people call it, uh, you need a godfather. I swear to God, man. A friend of mine was saying, man, Henry, you need a godfather, man. You need somebody that's going to vouch for you and open doors and all. But that's just how business is run. You know, and I didn't know how, how um, big that was. I thought it was just a small portion, but no. That's just how business is done. And as I got to travel, run, any, any, any country, it doesn't matter. You know, and I got to other markets, some markets are worse than others, but access is key. So while you're building your technology, while you're building your business, you need to build. Your, <clears throat> building your access should be number one. This is the first thing I do now. I'm building my access point, right? Somebody is going to be able to open the doors uh, uh, to, to facilitate uh, negotiation, facilitate deals making and all those things, I guarantee you, your life will be much, much easier. And if you look at most people when they're trying to come to a country in Africa, the first thing they do what is get access on the government level, right? Now, not everybody can do that, but try to get access on the private sector level. And the way you structure your deal usually is by revenue sharing, right? Or you, you kick back uh, some part of your revenue for helping you access. What we're trying to do now is bringing that access into the company. But again, that's very difficult. And maybe I'll, I'll talk a little bit about the challenges of getting those, access, those people that have access motivated. Because a lot of those people are mostly focused on the quick deals, not long term. Uh, this mindset of you know having equity and all, it's just not popular in Africa. It's just not popular. Uh, so finding people that have long-term views and all is very complicated, but access guys. So I'm just going to end with this, man. Um, if you're wondering why you're not growing, look at your access. Do you have the right access? You know, do you have somebody who's really well connected is helping you, uh, opening doors? Uh, what are the challenges? And you'll see most of the challenges you have to close deal, it's all based on access. Alright guys, put some comment below, subscribe, let me know what you think man. But access is in the name of the game, I'm trying to step up there for 2020. Um, Happy New Year and Merry Christmas for those, uh, if I don't do another vlog by then. Uh, peace.